And then for touch ups through touch ups, and then for touch ups throughout the day, what are you, a highlighter or a blush? Hey guys, welcome back. So I have got part one of my 2016 favorites for y'all today. So this is going to be face and eyes. So we're gonna go over primers, foundations, powders, concealers, bronzers, highlighters, blush, eye stuff, a lot of things to talk about. But I've got some great things to share with y'all and a lot of these you probably already know if you've watched my channel for a while, but we're just gonna run through my overall favorites for the year, so let's get to it. Starting off with face primers, I really feel like this was a year where I started using face primers really consistently. Before that, I just wasn't really all that into them, but now I pretty much use them almost every single day. Like, it's really rare if I don't wear one. So these are my two favorites. This one is the Murad Invisibler Perfecting Shield Broad Spectrum SPF 30 PA++. Love this, it's like a very kind of gel-like, silicone-y feeling sort of a primer, but it really helps the makeup stay on, helps with the oil, it's just great. And then this is a more recent favorite for me, this is the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer Blemishless. And this was one that was really not on my radar and I got it in gratis from Sephora, and I really like this. This is more um, like a water-based, or is it water-based, what does it say? Yeah, water-based gel that creates the perfect canvas for makeup application while improving the appearance of blemishes and controlling breakthrough shine. So it's less of like a silicone-y feeling primer and more just really light and gel-like. It's awesome. So if you are typically not into primers, I would say give a water-based primer a try because they really are different and they feel different on the skin. Love this one. For foundations for 2016, you can definitely check out my top five favorite foundations video to learn like what are my go-to overall favorite foundations because I definitely wore those a lot in 2016. But I wanted to mention these because I feel like these were kind of like newer discoveries this year and they were ones that I used quite a bit. So first off, I did mention this in my top five. I think I said it was like an honorable mention. This is the Lancome Tint Eye Doll Ultra Wear Makeup Stick and I wear it in 210 buff. This is just so fast, so easy. I'm running low on it. You just swipe it across your face, buff it in. It looks great, it wears really well. I love that makeup stick, it's awesome. And then I love this combo from IT Cosmetics for just like quick out the door sort of makeup. This is the Celebration Foundation SPF 50. I wear it in fair. I can also wear it in light, but fair works better for me right now. And then this one is the Celebration Foundation Illumination, also in fair. So what I like to do is I use this one um, kind of like pretty much all over my face, but especially in my T-zone. And then I use the illumination kind of like on the outsides of my face because it's a little bit too glowy for my preference um, for like my T-zone, but the rest of my face, I really do like it. And together they just look beautiful. For powders, I have three to mention to you and these all work together so nicely. They're just like this magic little trio of great powders. First off, this one is looking real dirty, but it's real good, so. <laughs> We gotta get past the dirty looking packaging because it's an awesome powder. This is the NARS All Day Luminous Powder Foundation in Light to Mont Blanc is the color I wear it in. I like to use this for setting my T-zone, especially my under eyes because it's not matte, but it's also not glowy either. It's just kind of like right in between, very skin-like, it's awesome. And then for the rest of my face, but also I can use this by itself as well. Like if I just want a one powder, sort of a situation. This works by itself too, but I really like it with the NARS. This is the Laura Mercier Baked Balance and Brighten Color Correcting Foundation, and I wear it in fair, and it's just awesome. It just melds into your skin, becomes one with your skin. It just um, helps to kind of balance everything out, and it really is a color correcting sort of a powder. Like, you can just see it evening everything out. It's awesome. And then for touch-ups, touch ups and then for a touch up throughout the day, <laughs> I love my IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Airbrush Silk Pressed Finishing Powder. I like the pressed one because I feel like it's just easier, but also I use less with this versus like a loose, I feel like I pick up too much product on my brush and I feel like you don't need very much of this. A little bit goes a long way and it really does help mattify, blur out the pores, 
just makes your skin look awesome. So I love this for touch-ups. I have three concealers to mention to you as well. These I included in my top five because they are go-tos for me. And then the other one is kind of like a newer sort of a favorite to me, but I think it's awesome. First off is the Maybelline Dream Lumi concealer. I can't even tell the rest of the name because it's all worn off because I use it all the time. I wear it in ivory. Only negative I have to say about this is that I go through it quickly, but they have a lot of different color options. They have one that's more yellowy, one that's more pinky. I actually have never tried either of those, but I really want to try the pinky one now because I love the texture of this. It just blends into the skin beautifully. It's very brightening. It just it looks really, really nice under the eyes. So I use this for under my eyes specifically. My MAC Pro Longwear Concealer has been a long time favorite for me. I wear it in NW20. I like this for my under eyes as well, but also for spot concealing, blemishes, discoloration. It's awesome. This is the one that's kind of a newer favorite for me. The Voodoo Makeup 10 Years Younger. And this is basically just like a pink concealer or pink like brightening sort of a product. It's really more brightening because it's it's definitely pink, but it's awesome. And it is like a pressed, um, creamy sort of a texture. It has coconut oil in it, so you kind of have to warm it up and then it just really blends into the skin beautifully. It's awesome. So this really kind of makes me want to get the pinky color Dream Lumi because I like the pinky tone of this one. Bronzers, I have two favorites. This one has been a long time favorite for me. My Too Faced Chocolate Soleil. I use this all the time. I use this on my face for contouring. I use it for just some general like bronzing and give my skin some color. I love this on my eyes. I use this all the time in my crease. Like if I just want a one shadow quick out the door makeup look or eye look, this is so fast for that. Like it just, it's perfect for in the crease. It's a perfect blending shade. And then I also really, really enjoy my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I know a lot of people love this one. It does have a strong scent. It's kind of perfumey, coconutty. It's not, I mean, it's kind of coconutty, but it's sort of like fakey, weird perfume coconutty. But I just really, really like the product. Like it blends into the skin beautifully. This is the um, bronzer that I'm wearing today. This is a great one and done bronzer because it has just a little bit of like a like a satiny sheen to it where it can be used um, for contouring, for bronzing up, for giving your skin some color. So it's great that way. I've also used this on my eyes too and it's just awesome. It's a really great bronzer if you've never tried it. It gets a lot of buzz and a lot of attention on YouTube and for good reason because it's an awesome bronzer. Highlighters, this was tough because I feel like this was a year that I was feeling the highlighters. I had a lot of favorite highlighters this year, but if I have to narrow down, I would say my Ofra highlighters and also my Makeup Geek highlighters. These are just beautiful and I feel like both of these brands like when they, I'm excited for them to come out with new colors. Like both brands, I think if they come out with a new color, I'm probably going to love it because I love all the ones that I've tried from them. Like this one is, um, Ofra's Beverly Hills and mine's kind of like swirled together in a little bit, a little bit messy looking, but you know, you get the general idea. I like to swirl them all except for the bronzy color. Cause with the bronzy color, it's a little bit too dark for me, but without the bronzy color, it is intense and amazing. I mean, it just blends into the skin beautifully. It's gorgeous on the eyes. Oh, I also love Blissful. I also love Rodeo Drive from them. They have um, one that's called Bliss that's like an eyeshadow and a highlighter. That one's awesome too. Just amazing quality. So I love the Ofra highlighters and the Makeup Geek highlighters. Oh my gosh. They look beautiful in the pan. They blend incredibly well into the skin. Like I've mentioned this several times. I feel like the formula on these is perfect. Like the ideal highlighter formula. This is the one that I'm wearing right now. This is Daybreak and it's like, I went a little bit ham with it today. I was just like, pile on more highlighter. Why not? So I've got a lot of highlighter on today, but this is Daybreak and it's a gorgeous peachy highlight. It's so, so pretty. So yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with either Ofra highlighters or Makeup Geek because 
They just make great highlighters. Both companies make great highlighters. Blush was tough too because I had a lot of favorites throughout the year, but I narrowed it down to three. I wanted to mention Benefits Dandelion Dew because this was kind of a surprise favorite for me. This is not a product that I would typically go for and enjoy because I'm not usually a cream liquid color cosmetics person. Like I, I prefer powder over cream or liquid typically for like, you know, blush and highlighter and whatever. But this one, I love. I don't know why I'm doing an angled swatch, but that, that's what we got. <laughs> that's what we got here to work with, folks. So it's just a beautiful baby pink. I have this on today, but I do have things over it. It just is easy to work with. Like one of the reasons I don't typically like cream or liquid products is they can be harder to blend, but I feel like this is really easy to blend. I use a stippling brush for it and it just like goes into the skin really easily. It smells nice. Yeah, mm. it has a really fresh sort of a smell, so I love the scent of it. I love the packaging. It's just super duper cute and a nice product. Let me sw um, let me swatch this off. No, let me wash off the swatch, not swatch off the wash. I really, really enjoyed Laura Geller Baked Blushes this year. This is the shade Pink Grapefruit, and I am wearing this today, and I kind of um, buffed it out a little bit because I had applied a lot. These are just amazing. They blend really well. I feel like I've said that a lot, but that's a goal that you would want with a face product is for something to blend well into the skin. And this does. And there are a bunch of different shades. Pink grapefruit is such a gorgeous, like every day, but slightly like warmer, like a bronzy, um, peachy everyday sort of a shade. It's gorgeous, but you can see it just has this glow to it. And these can be applied really intensely and it doesn't take a lot to build them up, but they're not hard to blend. They're really easy to blend. So you can either like build it up to this color or you can sheer it out and just get a, a like a, a light, nice sheen on the cheeks. It's so pretty. They're all gorgeous. I've not been disappointed in any of my Laura Geller baked blushes. And then this one, oh my gosh, this is such a good little blush and it's so affordable. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush and this is in Rose Champagne. This is one that I, when I first bought it, I thought that's gonna be too light. I don't know what that's supposed to be. What are you, a highlighter or a blush? I wasn't sure. <laughs> but when I get it on my skin, it's just like an everyday, literally go with every single makeup look. It doesn't detract from a makeup look, sort of a blush. It's awesome. There it is. And it's got a little bit of a sheen to it also. So it is a lighter shade. So I would say it's probably best for um, porcelain to light to medium skin tone, I would say, because you know even I have to build it up a little bit and I'm pretty fair. So yeah, awesome blush. But again, you could pick out any color of the Laura Geller ones and I think be happy. Eye primer. I know it's not a super glamorous product to talk about, but it is, I feel like, an essential product to talk about. I feel like eyeshadow primer can make or break other shadows, either from the drugstore or high end or whatever. I just feel like they're essential and make a huge difference. So my two favorites are the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This is really old. I probably need to just throw this away because I've had it for a long time, but it's still working. Love that one. And then this one is super affordable, but really, really good. I like these equally. Like I just have this already. And a lot of times I get these like in little sample -y things or with the palette or whatever. So I've got quite a few of these, but if I just like were needing to go out and purchase a new eyeshadow primer, I would get this one because it's affordable and it's great. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. These really help the vibrancy of your shadows, but also the longevity as well. Helps to control like the oil and the creasing. They're awesome. If you watch my channel, it probably comes as no surprise to you that Eyeshadow was another difficult category to narrow down, but I think I did pretty good. First off, I was really, really enjoying my Make A Peak foiled shadows this year. I love them anytime, but there were just a lot of times that I was reaching for them this year. Like some of my go-tos would be, I think this one's called Untamed. Yeah, Untamed, which is a gorgeous, like orangey sort of a gold. 
I love this kind of like purpley pink, which is called Whimsical. Let me swatch those two for you. These are just incredible. Incredibly pigmented, just intense. Like if you like an intense metallic eye look, try the Makeup Geek Foil Shadows because they are just some of my go-tos. They never disappoint me. They're so, so pretty. Palettes, I gotta go with these two. First off, my BH Cosmetics Galaxy Chic 18 Color Baked Eyeshadow Palette. I've heard so many people say that they loved this palette and I figured I would love it too because I like BH Cosmetics Baked Shadows a lot. But once I got this palette, I was like, oh, I really love this. This is really, really good. Now I apply these, um, wet so I use like uh, MAC Fix Plus to foil them and I feel like that really like makes them extra pretty and extra amazing. Woo! Look at that. That is so pretty. I have a whole video on my BH Cosmetics baked shadows so I will list it in a card for you. So love the Galaxy Chic palette and then also a lot of people are probably mentioning this palette in their yearly favorites because it's awesome. This is what I have on my eyes today, along with one other thing that I'm about to mention to you. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance. This is incredible. The shadows are gorgeous. They blend like themselves. Like, they don't just blend well. They blend themselves, it seems like. Like, it takes no effort to blend these. They're so pigmented, but not hard to blend. A lot of times, super pigmented can be hard to blend. Sometimes not pigmented can be hard to blend, but these are really easy to blend and they wear so well throughout the day. This, these are the shadows that I wore um, for my sister's wedding because I wanted to, you know, I wanted my shadows to last all day and this was the palette that I reached for and it worked really, really well. I have to mention my Touch and Soul duos. These are the Metalist Liquid Foil and Glitter Shadow Duos. I have three of them and I love all three of these. I have one of them on right now so you can see what it looks like. That one is Margaret, so it's kind of like a coppery sort of a color. This is my most recent purchase. And then this one is Talia. This is kind of like a light champagne silvery sort of a color. And then this one was the very first one that I got. This is Lottie, which is kind of like a taupey purpley sort of a color. These are high maintenance to use because one side has a liquid like a cream shadow, not a liquid, like a cream shadow. And then one side is like a loose glitter, but they're kind of like, kind of like flaky flat sort of glitter. So you do get fallout on your face, but I feel like it's worth it because I love the way it looks on the eyes. So I will get the liquid shadow on there and go ahead and like kind of keep my eyes looking down so I don't crease it. And then I'll get the, um, glitter side and tap it on with the applicator and then tap it in with my finger. I just make them work. I mean, they take a little bit of learning how to use them, but they're so worth it because they just look amazing. Eyeliners, these are my two standouts. For a pencil liner, I would have to say my NARS Larger Than Life Long Wear Eyeliner, and this is in Via Veneto. This is super long wearing. Super long wearing in the waterline, tight line. It just wears super well and that is something that I'm looking for in a pencil liner because I'm typically using it in my waterline or in my tight line. Um, I just want it to last. I don't want it to smudge and this one is one of the most long wearing liners if not the most long wearing liner I've ever used. So I love that one. And then for a liquid liner, my Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper. This is awesome. Mine's um, drying out at this point so I don't really want to show you a swatch because I feel like it's not really a fair interpretation of what it looks like, but just know it's super black, super long wearing. Um, it's kind of like a pen, like a bendy pen sort of an applicator, so it's easy to use. Like it, um, it isn't, it doesn't move too much and it doesn't move too little. It's just like the perfect combo where it's right in between and easy to use. Great, great liner. Mascaras for the year, I have two It Cosmetics favorites, and I bet a lot of people are gonna be including this one in their 2016 favorites. This is the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. This has gotten a lot of attention on YouTube, and for very good reason. This just gives you vavoom, crazy volume, crazy length. It builds on itself. It just keeps going. Like, you can just keep applying more, and it just gives you more amazing lashes. It's just awesome and the packaging is so pretty on it. 
And then I also love my It Cosmetics Tight Line. Full Lash Length Black Primer with Peptide Enhancing Serum. I don't really know why it says primer, because I use this as a mascara. I use this on my lower lash line. Now it will smudge a little bit, especially if my eyes watering like this one is today, but I just love how skinny the little wand is. So, I mean, that's like, you can barely even see it there. Like I, I can't even hardly see the thing. It's so tiny, but it just works so perfectly for the lower lash line. It's awesome. And then lastly for brows, I have two favorites from the drugstore and I would pick these over any high-end brow product. These are just my favorites overall. Regardless of the price point, that's just an added bonus. These are my favorites. So first is the NYX Tame and Frame Tinted Brow Pomade. This is a really nice shade for my brows. This is blonde and it's kind of more of a taupey blonde. So I have more kind of like cool toned blonde hair. It's just, this is my natural color. This is what God gave me. So I've got kind of, you know, more cool toned hair. So I have more cool toned brows and this is a cool toned brow product. And it just goes through the brows so well. I feel like it's easier to use than the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. It just is more like moussey and light. It's just awesome. Wears really well throughout the day. And then my NYX Micro Brow Brow Pencil. I use this just kind of like for, um, I don't know, kind of like doing this part of my brows and then maybe like a little bit of like finishing of my brows. I mostly use this, but then I use a little bit of this if I feel like I need to kind of finish up the structure of my brows a little bit. All right guys, so that wraps up part one of my 2016 favorites. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be watching for part two, that's gonna be coming soon. That will be lips and skincare, hair care, body care, that type of stuff, so that is coming soon. I would love to know what some of your favorites from 2016 were. Let me know that down below. Ask me any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer those. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.